we start? Yeah. All right. So good afternoon, uh, everybody, once again. I think we you have know, enriching day so far. So we have this very important study which we presented earlier in the day to the SEBI chairman on uh, the women on boards in India, uh, which uh, Dr. Miharika Gora very graciously had agreed to work with Fiki on this uh, significant report. Uh, as I mentioned in the morning as well, it's a survey-based report to really understand uh, not only in terms of you know the quantity uh, that the representation itself on the boards of the women, but all the voice and their contribution. So I think without no further ado, uh, over to you, Professor Miharika Gora, for uh, making a detailed presentation on this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it is my pleasure to uh, present a work that we started almost a year ago. Uh, and there were seven people who, of course, helped me do this. Uh, the first person who motivated and supported the study was Mr. Aaron Dupin and the team at FICI. Uh, so, Jyoti, Ava, Sheikh, all of us, all of you helped me to do this. So, I am just going to very quickly take you through the findings of the study because it's an interesting, I hope you will all uh, find some of the insights from it um, uh, meaningful and interesting and things that you could possibly work on. Uh, so, very quickly, without much further ado, let me move on. Um, can we have the next slide, please? Um, so the um, and and the next one uh, we will get on to next one please yeah so you know in the world um, though women constitute about fifty percent of the world population uh, give and take some uh, a percent here or there in different countries uh, but they don't necessarily uh, do uh, they're not represented in the same numbers in different walks of life especially in the corporate world. And, and therefore, several countries have uh, uh, looked at it, have thought about it, and have wondered what they could do about it. And in 2003, several countries released uh, mandates on minimum number of women on boards of corporations. Norway actually led the way and Europe set the standard. And what we did was we looked at the G20 uh, countries uh, because they had a variety of uh, uh, situations. There were countries which had uh, put a mandate. There are countries which have said we will, we will voluntarily uh, uh, disclose and you will monitor closely. And then there are countries which don't have a standard. And we decided we would just compare what has happened to the number of women on board as a result of putting this standard. So if you show us the next slide, please, you will see this. Um, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, there it is. Uh, so you will see that there are, um, uh, there are, um, uh, if you look at it, there are countries like, um, France, Netherlands, which have put in uh, their uh, mandates. These are countries which have a different, ma a certain kind of a mandate. And you will see that before mandate and after mandate, there is actually a change in the number of women that have started to come on the boards. And I think what might be interesting for each one of you to look at is that the number is actually matching the mandate. So if France said 40% mandate, Today, France is 44.2%. If India said we have uh, one uh, woman on the board as a mandate, then we have actually 16.8% of women on uh, boards uh, on board. So the, uh, the numbers the countries have reached is based on the mandate. Let's also look at what happened when there was a voluntary uh, thing in some of the countries. So if you uh, go to the next slide, please, you will see that, that in countries like Japan, Turkey, United States, Canada, United Kingdom, and Australia, they actually said we would like a certain number and we would like countries to have the mandate, uh, the companies to do a voluntary disclosure and monitor it. And we found even that increased representation. As compared to the next set of countries, uh, next uh, slide please, where there is no mandate, no discussion, no voluntary disclosure. Next slide please. Um, next slide please, Rajiv. 
I need to see the next year. Okay, uh, you will see that the numbers are really small. So South Korea, Turkey, um, uh, Mexico, Brazil, Russia, they're still often in the lower end of the tens or even less than that. So the numbers definitely depend on mandate. And India was among the first developing countries to actually put a mandate. And if you go to the next slide, uh, we have been lucky that uh, you know we have had at least by April 2015, uh, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs said that there had to be at least one woman director, and SEBI by April 2019 said that at least one woman director had to be independent woman director. And therefore, what we did was, if you go to the next slide, please, what we, uh, what we did was we said we had 10 years of almost having the mandate. It is time for us to look at what does this mandate really, uh, how has it panned out? So we wanted to analyze how well the topics have actually implemented. We wanted to describe the profile, compensation, age, tenure, reasons for leaving off these, of the uh, reasons for women staying on or leaving, and also understand the actual experience of women on board. So if you go to the next slide, and the next slide, what we did was, and the next slide, we actually used two ways that we studied this. One was um, a, a survey-based study sent to all women uh, board members, where we asked them questions such as, uh, you know, what was the means of appointment, what were the uh, factors that have led them to actually accept the position, how are they, um, you know, how ready do they feel to be on the community, are their expectations met, and what are some of the challenges they did. We had, uh, though we wrote to all the women, we had 192 women directors who responded to us, and of which 108 were independent women directors. So uh, our uh, qualitative research is uh, based on the 192 women that responded to us. And if you go to the next slide, what we also did was we used the data that was in the Prime database, who is another partner in this study, who actually gave us access to the study. We um, analyzed all the company's uh, data in terms of you know the, uh, the who's on the board, what time, and all of that. So there are 1944 NSE listed companies in Prime database. We also double checked the data with uh, the MCA websites for about 1,600 of the women directors, and we also compared it with the men uh, board of directors to be able to see how this, how the numbers compared with the women. So that's what we did. So if you go ahead to the next slide, um, what we did was uh, let's go on. Uh, we find that there is a, uh, in terms of profile. Uh, our women who entered the boards are highly educated. In fact, 51% of them hold a master's degree, 38% of them hold a bachelor's degree. Almost no, I think there was like two or three of them uh, who did not have a school education. Everybody else was highly educated. But what was also interesting was that the women on boards were much younger, 10 years average younger than the men on boards. So the average age is 56.4, and they are actually um, uh, uh, the 10 years younger than them. And what we also found that most companies, when they went out to recruit these women, they did not use, they typically used professional personal networks, but they did not use specialized search firms or so and so forth. Actually, only 17% use them. So the general way of selection is through word of mouth, knowing who we know, uh, kind of way in how they uh, did it. Uh, and if we go further, what we found was that uh, like, unlike what was often said when the mandates were brought in, that people will put in a whole lot of non-independent women as directors and that is what will happen and therefore we will skirt the issue. In fact, we did skirt the issue but not in terms of bringing uh, independent women. Uh, the, the, uh, just uh, there were the 58 percent women who are on boards who are independent. Uh, in fact, but the ratio of the women on board is 1.03, so they barely met the mandate. And 73% of the companies 
that are there have actually ended up only having one woman on the board and if you see uh, this graph it's a turning graph uh, turning pie chart where 73% have only one woman there are 20% which have two or more women two women and there is only 1% of the companies which actually have more than four or five directors in fact we have named those companies there are only five such companies in our uh, database which have five or more than while the most common number of men on boards is five the most common number of women on boards is one Uh, so that's that's something we found. Also, we find that there is a steep inorganic growth that has happened in uh, the next slide, please. Uh, there, there is a steep inorganic and the next slide. Uh, uh, there's a steep inorganic growth that has happened. Uh, in fact, around the dates of implementation is when you see spikes in. Um, uh, in women getting uh, on the board and which is possibly uh, you know if you look at this uh, if we did a month to month thing for 2019 because that is when so we said that you had to have one independent woman director actually there were 39 women who were appointed as independent women director just on 1st april a day before you know the um, thing happened so again there is definitely a certain amount of we don't know who to get in now that there is a mandate let's find somebody and there is often around the dates there are spikes uh, what we also found was and if you go to the next slide please what we also found was that and the next slide please uh, uh, that women Uh, the, it is often found in the literature that women on boards are more stretched than men on boards. That means they serve on the same boards. Many similar women, uh, the same women serve on several boards. In fact, the numbers show that the men and women are fairly equally stretched, 1.23, 1.24. If there is a stretch, there is a stretch in the term of in the number of women independent women directors. So they are. the most stretched group but yet it's not so terrible I and mean, there's still typically one woman on the board and they are not all the same women in fact in our study we also found that the nsc 50 companies are the ones where they have the same women who are serving on the um, uh, on the board so there are there's a, a phenomenon of the golden skirt or golden sari so there are the same well known women who are on part of these only for the nsc 50 companies it doesn't happen the same if we go forward if you go to the next um, um uh, slide what we did find is and this is interesting for those of the women who are on multiple boards in fact 40% of their second appointment comes within 6 months uh, so i get on one board i get on another board the third appointment comes in actually less than a month of the second appointment we also found many times they are on related companies that is the same owner or the same person has three or four companies they get on the same companies what we also found that they were um, in fact uh, 52% were hired to be uh, on for less than in less than one month and what we also found which was most disturbing was that a large number of the women are less than 40 in fact there were 23 women who were less than 30 and there were 14 women who were less than 25 so they are barely graduating out of college and they are independent women directors on the board and that is something that is definitely something for us to look at while for there are some men who are also on the board and they are less than 25 that number is also 13 but all of them are being groomed for leadership positions in the company so they are non independent directors in their family businesses while for women only five of them were actually non independent directors the rest were all independent directors so there is something that is happening it is also interesting as to how many of them actually if you go to the next slide please you will see that that the number of women on the board as chairperson is actually minuscule as compared to men 
uh, only 0.7 percent of independent women directors actually occupy chairperson roles. And what we also find is that the number of women who have come through the ranks are or are on the board, which is uh, so they are in what we might call um, uh, executive positions on the board. That is also very small. That means the leadership line that is bringing people, women on the board is also really, really uh, small. So if you go to the next slide, please, we also find, we also looked at which committees did they serve on. And what we again find is uh, that, of course, uh, uh, you know, they, the number of committees that the women chair in and are members of is smaller than the actual proportion of women on the board. So if there are 16% of women who are on boards, the number of women who are, uh, who are chairing committees such as the Audit Committee, the NRC, the CSR, the Stakeholder Grievance Committee and the, um, uh, and the Recruitment Committee, they are actually less, uh, they are 6%, 9%, 11%, 11%, 11%, 11% and 2%. So it's a really small number who are actually uh, chairing committees, and um, and if you take that as the percentage of women, that number seems high. But if you take as the percentage of the number of all men and women who are on boards, that number is really minuscule. So um, they're there, but they're still not taking leadership positions. What was fascinating to look at is actually women on boards are joining, but they're also leaving much earlier than the men do. And so if you show us the next slide, you will see that they not only leave, but the reasons they give for leaving are very different. In fact, men typically leave because they retire. Women are typically leaving because they are leaving for personal reasons. You can't simply say that a woman who is an independent or a non-independent director will have work-life balance to look at because that doesn't seem right. But yet there is something that is happening in the courts that they leave within three to within four years and they are giving reasons such as personal reasons for actually leaving the board. So again, there is something that we possibly need to look at further, but this was an, an interesting one to look at. And if you go back, go to the next slide, please, you will also see what would have seemed very simple that actually women are getting paid less, uh, remunerated less than the men are. Uh, so the women get 36.8 lakhs versus a man gets 87.3 lakhs and what is also interesting is it is not in terms of sitting fee which is of course you know legally required to be the same. In fact 61% lesser commissions and share units for women as directors compared to men as directors. So there is something that is also happening in terms of how we are compensating women compared to men when they are on boards. Uh, again, we asked, if you go to the next on the next slide please, because we are running out of time so I have to do this very quickly. Uh, what we also found was that uh, actually a lot of people said that they expect, uh, we, asked people, uh, we asked the women directors what part of your expectations were met and what part of your expectations were unmet as you joined boards. Uh, as you could by now say, the expectations around learning, broadening of perspectives, acceleration of learning were all met, but unmet expectations included remuneration, they still did not feel that they were visible as part of the of being on the board and they did not gain any recognition for, or gain little recognition for being on board. So that's something that happened. Uh, we asked women what challenges they faced and we found that they uh, shared, and if you go to the next slide please, uh, a number of women said that they were concerned about onerous regulatory requirements and heavy liabilities, a lack of opportunity to drive or oversee key company decisions, and they also felt that the board itself spent very little time on getting them to understand operational issues of the company, uh, because that's what would help them give direction. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, which is my penultimate slide, uh, if I look at all the data that we looked at, what I would say is that the way forward for us is the first one is to, and if you could uh, just do a click, we, we should see the first way forward. Uh, can you please do that, Rajiv? Uh, just click. Uh, yeah, we should just do a next and, and we should be able to see it. Yeah. 
So there are, there is actually no dearth of qualified women to serve on boards. Uh, we have, uh, uh, there's no reason why you should be taking uh, very young women. There is no reason why you should be having only one woman on the board. Uh, in fact, I think we need to increase a mandate. Given the fact that how we have seen mandates impact the number of women on the board, that is why we need to possibly increase the women on board because that if we have two to three, maybe we would be better off. The second one is, and there is a, another reason when we put this to this, in fact, there are there is more than enough research to show that one woman is not able to, is often either invisible or hypervisible. So either way, invisibility or hypervisibility does not help the cause of the woman, and they struggle to contribute. In fact, you need a critical number, a critical mass of people to be, in fact, able to contribute fully. So you need possibly three women uh, to actually start to see them contribute to their complete potential. So one please, um, the next one please, um, go ahead, the next year. So we also need checks and balances around age and experience. We need to implement to stop companies from inducting women on boards to meet the mandate. Um, I think as much as the mandate is required, the mandate should also have a little more check and balance. It needs to be more nuanced to say you can't have XXX kind of people on the board. And, and I think uh, our study shows some such ways uh, to look at. Uh, the fourth one, uh, if you go on, um, please. Uh, yeah, uh, I also, uh, given the unmet expectations of women and given the challenges women spoke about and given our own personal experiences of working on boards, I think at the end of the day, boards need to be also mindful of inclusion processes. Diversity is a number, but inclusion, which is what really helps people to feel psychologically safe to be able to work and, and contribute fully, I think boards also need to look at the inclusion process. And I did not find any single board which was completely ob oblivious to it, but they also are not doing anything actively around. And the last one is that I think, uh, if you please go ahead, uh, Every time you're on a board and you're doing something new, there will always be challenging situations that you're confronted with. Who do you go to at that time? Given the fact that certain things are very uh, confidential and a lot of women don't have that network, so I think mentoring network, um, uh, networks are important for and setting them up are important for women to be able to also function well and feel safe and feel like they can do something. Um, thank you. If you go forward, just, just to show uh, all the people who have helped me do this work. Obviously, when you have such a large database, you can't do this easily. We have, I have five, um, uh, four of my uh, students and ex-students who have helped me. So, Kartikeyan, Subhashish, Chayanika, Tashika. Uh, another co-researcher, Vijayalakshmi Chari, who has helped us, the Fiki team, uh, uh, Jyoti, Nidhi, and Abha, and of course, our data partners and analytic partners, Apos Algo and, data, uh, and Prime Database have also been very helpful. Uh, thank you. I'm willing to have, take any questions or any thoughts that you might have. So thank you, Nehavika Ji. I think excellent presentation. It's it's very in-depth work. We're glad that we're finally able to put it out uh, here. So uh, thank you for your time. And uh, we do hope uh, if there are any questions, we will pass on to you. Uh, and we'll take it forward. So we need to now close the session. Thank you, everybody, for staying with us this long. And we do look forward to having you all uh, join tomorrow. There are several uh, senior government representatives as well as the private sector guys who are there tomorrow as well. So look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow also. And if there are any issues and concerns uh, on uh, joining the link, etc., do share with us. And uh, we will try and sort it out as much as we can. So thank you, Niharika Ji, once again. Thank you. Thank you.